Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be using a union based SQL injection attack to list the database content on non Oracle databases. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a SQL injection vulnerability in the product category filter. The results from the query are returned in the application's response, so you can use a union attack to retrieve data from other tables. The application has a login function and the database contains a table that holds usernames and passwords. You need to determine the name of this table and the columns it contains, then retrieve the contents of the table to obtain the username and password of all users. To solve the lab, log in as the administrator user. All right, so we've got a couple of angles over here. The first one is we need to determine the table that contains usernames and passwords. The next one is to determine the relevant columns. And then once we have the table name and the column names, we will use that to output the content of the table. And then we need to log in as the administrator user. So the nice thing about this lab is that we're not assuming anything. So in previous labs, we were given the name of the user's table. We were also given the column names that contain the usernames and passwords. So in this lab, we're going to have to figure that out all on our own, which is more of a realistic scenario than the previous labs. Okay, so let's create an analysis section and access the lab. All right, so it looks like it's the same shopping application that we've been dealing with in the past couple of labs. You could refine your search based on a category once you do refine your search. So we're doing it for accessories over here. It'll only display the results that are related to this category. And that's done based on a field in the URL called category. And we know this field is vulnerable to SQL injection because the lab tells us. However, in a scenario where you don't know it's vulnerable to SQL injection, all you have to do is fuzz the application with SQL characters to see if it breaks a query at the back end. And it does. So we get an internal server error, which confirms that it's potentially vulnerable to SQL injection. All right. The thing about this category field is that whatever we enter over here gets displayed on the page. And what that means is that we could use a union based SQL injection in order to display content from other tables in the database. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to move on to using burp from now and on because it's just easier when it comes to um, encoding. Let's close that. Hit next. Start burp. All right, let's put that over here for a bit and set proxy proxy to use burp. All right. Now, when I load this, it should be intercepted by burp and it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to repeater because I need to send this request a couple of times. And I'm going to turn my intercept off. OK, so in order to exploit a union based SQL injection, we said there's a couple of steps. The first one is to find the number of columns that the vulnerable query is using. So in this case, the vulnerable query is the one that filters on category. And the way to determine the number of columns is to use the order by clause. So order by and the column number over here. If we enter a column number that doesn't exist, it'll throw an error. So this way we could determine the number of columns that are being used by the vulnerable query. I can tell. Based on this, that there's two columns, one for the title of the product and then the other for the description of the product. And so there's at least two columns. And let's confirm that with burp. So let's copy that, put it over here. Do control U to URL encode, hit send. 
and we get a 200 OK response. That means that this column exists, which again makes sense because I said that there's at least two columns based on the output that is on the page. So this one should also give us a 200 response code. So again, control U to URL encode it, hit send, and we get a 200 response code. Let's try three. And again, control U to URL encode it, hit send, and we get an internal server error. So I'm just going to make note of that. What that means is that the number of columns that are being used by the vulnerable query is 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. All right, the next thing to do is to find the data type of the columns. And the reason we do that is because the username and password are going to be of type text. And so in order to be able to output them from the database, we need columns that accept type text. And so let's see if any of these columns are of type text. And the way we do that is using union select null statements. So we know there's two columns based on the first step over here. And so what I'm going to do is we iteratively try each one to see if they accept type string. Now, if this is incompatible with type string, it should throw an error. If it's compatible, you should see the character A on the screen. Now, again, just based on the output, you could see that there's alphabets over here and there's alphabets over here. So they both should accept type uh, string. And so instead of doing it iteratively, I'm just going to try both at the same time just to save a little bit of time. And let's try that. And I copied the wrong thing. OK, control U to URL encode it. Hit send. And we get a 200 response code. And that's a good sign. So we should see our characters A somewhere. So you could see it over here and over here. So we make a note. Both columns except type text. OK, before we try to output content from the database, we need to figure out which database we're dealing with. And the reason behind that is because the query that you use in order to output all the tables in the database is different depending on the database. So one way to do that is to figure out the version of the database. And to do that, we're going to use the hint section in the exercise, so the SQL injection cheat sheet. You could see over here, database version. So on Oracle, this is the query that you do in order to output the version. This is Microsoft, PostgreSQL, and MySQL. Now, depending on which one actually gives us a 200 response and the version of the database, we'll know which database we're dealing with. But you could see over here that we're dealing with a non-Oracle database. And so we're left with three options, Microsoft, PostgreSQL, and MySQL. So let's start with Microsoft. And again, we need to fit that with our SQL injection. So it would be union, select at at version and then there's still another column we could just put null in there and comment out the rest let's try that let's do control u to url encode it hit send and we get a 500 internal server response so i'm just going to make a note saying not microsoft next let's try postgresql Again, we got to fit it in our union based SQL injection. And let's test that out. And again, control U to URL encode it, hit send, and we get a 200 OK response. And so we should see 
the version over here. Close Squares SQL. Here we go. So that's the version of the database. So I'm going to make a note, say 200 response, 200 OK, and that it's a Postgres SQL database. All right, now that we know the database version, we could use that in order to output all the tables in the database. So that's our next step. Output the list of table names in the database. And the way to do that, we go back to our hints sheet and we go to section database contents and it tells you based on the database how you could output the list of table names that are contained in the database. And that's why we needed to do step number three because you'll see over here, each one differs based on the database you're dealing with. Now we're dealing with PostgreSQL, so this is the way to do it. So you've got the information schema dot tables view and what that does is it allows you to get the information about all the tables within a database. So we're going to copy that. And again, I need to fit it in my union base SQL injection. So I'm going to say union select and we need two column names over here because that's how the union base SQL injection attack works. So I'm going to copy this and just Google it to see the column names that are available to us. And I'm actually going to say PostgreSQL because it might differ. Click on columns. All right, so these are the column names. So you've got table catalog, table schema, table name, column name, and so on. So I care about the table name. So I'm just going to copy this one and put it over here. And then I'm going to say null because I don't care about outputting any other column in that table. So I'm going to copy this, put it in here and do control U to your rel encode it. Hit send and we get an internal server error, which means we did something wrong and we forgot to do the comment. So hit send again and we get a 200 OK response. So this should have outputted the table names that are available in the database. So you could see over here there is PG partition table, PG available extension and so on. I'm looking for a table that contains the user's word in it. And here we go. So you could see there is a table called users underscore and then some random characters. So I'm assuming that this is possibly my table that contains the list of usernames and passwords of the users of the application. We'll confirm that in a bit using the next step. And the next step is to output the column names of the table. So what we're trying to do is figure out which columns contain the usernames and passwords because we're going to need that in our end query. And to do that, we go to the hint section. And you'll see over here for PostgreSQL, the way to do that is select star from information schema dot columns where table name is equal to table name here. So let's copy that. Again, it has to be part of our union based SQL injection. So we'll add that. The table name is this one over here. And we need two column names. So to figure out the column names that are available, we'll Google it again and say PostgreSQL. Okay, so the view columns has these column names. So I'm interested in this one over here. 
So I'm going to say column name and null. OK, so that should give me the column names that are available in this users table. So let's copy that, put it in burp. Control U to URL encode it and hit send. OK, 200 response code, which is good. So what I'm looking for is a column that contains the word username. That's good. So we've got this one over here and then a column that potentially contains the word password. All right. And we found another one over here. Perfect. So now we know the table name. We also know the column name that contains the usernames and the column name that contains the passwords. And so we could put this information together in order to output content from this table. And so that's step number six, which is output the usernames and passwords. And that's just a normal query. So let's have our union based SQL injection payload. And then we say select this column and this column over here from this table and comment out the rest of the query. So let's copy that. Put it in burp. Control U to URL encode it. Hit send. And 200 response. Again, that's a good sign. Let's see if it outputted the usernames and passwords. And it did. So you could see over here a username and a password. We're looking for the administrator user. And it's right over here. So I'm just going to copy all that. And put it over here. OK, so we've got the administrator's password. Now we can use it to log in as the administrator user, which is the last step in our end goal. OK, click on my account. Select administrator. Copy the password. Click login. And it says, congratulations, you've solved the lab. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.